You, you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's this, this, this is nothing you can know what's up in the hood. The world is sick. We humans had created factories, cars, airplanes, and now are experiencing climate change. What do you know about climate change? Climate change is the change of our climate, basically, and how it affects us as uh, human beings. It's dealing with a lot of a lot of things about the weather and how it's changing a lot about how things are getting too hot, too cold, uh, water levels are rising. How does climate change affect you personally? I actually have some relatives that are affected by climate change. They live um, um, in California and they had to move because um, a friend of theirs actually had to um, move to a different house because theirs were actually flooded. Climate change affects me personally in many ways. If it could affect me uh, with like the sea level rising, um, it can cause floods for me. It could pollute the air. It will. I will have less air to breathe. It, it will really affect me. What is climate justice? Climate justice is basically making sure that the right thing is being done to stop climate change. Make sure it's like it's over. We can all live in a healthy, better world. So I think it's very much needed because it's coming to a time where it's gonna, be, it's very bad and it's not looking too good for us and our animals and trees and anything, really. This is our planet. It can't heal itself. We need your help. Get out and vote. Think of finding a sharp needle in a haystack. It's difficult to find such an object so small and minuscule. However, you can inadvertently find it if it pricks against your inattentive hand. That's exactly how I found her, poking me in the hand when neither one of us were noticing. Englewood started as a rural community in the 1800s. It really grew after the Chicago fire in 1871. Englewood's racial makeup changed radically during the Great Black Migration. Poverty, drugs, and crime took its toll on the community during the last half of the 20th century. Our after-school matters group made a visit to the Greater Englewood Development Corporation located in the U.S. Bank Building at 63rd by Halston. Chief Financial Officer Tamara Hughes gave our group an explanation of GEDC and what it can do. Welcome everyone to the Greater Englewood CDC. My name is Tamora Hughes and I am the Program Director for Development. And here at the Greater Englewood CDC, what we do is help and service small businesses, as well as we have a technology program that we help to certify individuals into the technology industry. If you're not aware of Greater Englewood, um, you can tell kind of from the statistics that show that this is a neighborhood that has a lot of violence and so forth. But there's a good component here at uh, Inglewood in the Inglewood community and that is is that we have some very creative businesses that have ideas but find sometimes that there's so many obstacles that get in their way and that's what we're here for is to help eliminate the obstacles so we help those businesses move beyond their limitations so that they can excel. Hi I'm Akira and we're standing in Grady Inglewood CDC with Jim Harvey. Yes. Hi how you doing? Today? How you doing? Okay. Um, so, how did this organization start? Um, it's a good question. This organization started back in 2011. Four individuals who all had full-time jobs actually put together a business plan for this organization. 
This space that we're in right now is called the Inglewood Accelerator. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it offers small businesses and particularly startups a place where they can get to work, if you will, without necessarily having the cost of a storefront, without necessarily spending money on overhead. We want to keep all that cost down. And then as an accelerator, we would hope that they pour that money back into their business. There's an internal internet system here in which we have business plan uh, templates, marketing plan templates, we have uh, training modules, we have social media strategy. We actually have a calendar for this conference room and I want to show you guys this. Look over. So, oh, this is it. What our small businesses get a chance to enjoy is that on that internet portal, as a member, they get a chance to schedule this room, whether they want to do a training, whether they want to hire an employee, whether they want to do a presentation, and they don't have to be here to do it. Because they have that internal internet access, they can do it whether they're here, whether they're at home, they can be on vacation in, Van in Cancun and still make that appointment. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, can you explain the room we're in now? Where are we? We are in the our community room that acts also is our training room. So right now we have students from all over Inglewood who are participating in what's called IT Essentials. And the IT Essentials program is a foundational curriculum that allows these young men and women to position themselves to get a global certification through Cisco Systems and through Microsoft. So what we're doing is we're giving them exposure to programming and coding, but also to putting together and taking apart computer systems, understanding network and routing systems. We want to make sure that they're getting this broad education in terms of technology. So at the end of this basic foundational uh, uh, training, they have an opportunity to go into advanced certifications in either programming or hardware. Jim Harden gave us a tour of their offices. What's so interesting about this building, this building was built back in 1929. It has landmark status. So some of the uh, decor here is absolutely stunning. And I, could, I think you guys should need to check out my crib. Let's check out this place. By the way, this is Kelsey. This is our chief Hi, Kelsey. office I'm manager. Here. You guys met Tamora already. So I just want to make sure you guys see how beautiful this woodwork is this in these is offices. This is Tamora's office. It is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where she do all her magic. Yes, it is. And, she, and magic is what she does, too, by the way. Okay? I make the money in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. How you doing? Ooh, oh, pat my back. So, guys, this is our chief operating officer. This is one of our members, and that's our executive director, Hi. Glenn Fulton. Hi, how you doing? My name is Akira. Of course, you guys know that we have a development going on across the street with the Whole Foods Project. And if you take a look over here, you won't get a better shot, I don't think, than this. So right here in the corner is going to be Chipotle and Starbucks. This development started almost a year ago to the day. And uh, it has the community very, very excited. So you guys should have a sense now of what we do. It's, it's primarily three things. We are focused on small business development. We're focused on small business retention, and we're focused on workforce development as it pertains to having young men and women be exposed to a growing uh, industry. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you. Jim says, Inglewood is starting a new era. Looking at all this construction going on, it is hard to argue with him at that point. I was born in Michigan, just across the lake in Lansing, mm -hmm. never raised there. I went to every state in the United States. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. I moved here when I was 15, back in the 80s. I finished high school here in 86. And I'm Tom. I'm the mayor of the bridge. In the summer of 2017, our After School Matters group took a trip to the Lawrence Avenue underpass at Lakeshore Drive in Chicago Uptown. This has been the residential spot for several homeless people 
who call it the Uptown Tent City. Chicago has been trying to evict them from their spot, and we spoke to them about their struggles before losing this fight. We asked their daily routine. A daily routine, uh, when we wake up, we make sure that um, the trash is gone. Um, if there was food donated from the night before, we normally throw it away, so we keep the rat population down. And um, <clears throat> sometimes some of us go to uh, the food soup kitchens to eat. Some of us go to the library to spend the day. Some of us take walks, go fishing, you know, and, and some of us go to clothing pantries, food pantries. You know, get out. Most of us like to go, I like to get out and about. I don't like to stay underneath the bridge all day. There's too much in Chicago. It's too much of a nice summer to stay in a, underneath the bridge. People come from Oklahoma and they say, um, is anybody harassing you? And we tell them, yeah, every night there's people that come down here and someone tells them, mm, go down there. That's a good place. You can get something, just pick it up and if you need a shirt or you need the food or if you need something, go there. And they'll ask us if we have um, vacancies. They'll ask me if I have a vacancy. Could they sleep in my tent? And I said, no, I said, them. your family's waiting on you. You need to go back across Clarendon. Do whatever you can to get home because this is no place for you. You're not homeless. Oh, yeah, he says. I'm homeless, all right. I said, no, you're not. How do you know I'm not? And I said, well, your hair's too neat, your hands too clean, and you brush your teeth, <laughs> and you're drunk. I take care of tents, food, uh, donations, supplies, um, and we enforce all our rules that we have down here. We're usually up all night. Which can you say why you're up all night? Well, we eat a little bit and we talk a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of problems with tents and uh, a lot of noise with cars. Every few seconds there's cars passing and the engines don't let you sleep. My mom died and I suffered from a, a PTSD. Uh, and so I had a total breakdown, so I couldn't quite function. Um, I couldn't hold a job, I was too upset. Um, I also am bipolar and have anxiety attacks, so that had a, a large part in it. So before I came out actually into the park, I stayed at some of the um, you know, uh, shelters. Uh, so I experienced that, which wasn't quite pleasant. And then eventually I made my way here because it was unpleasant. What are some of the things you have seen? I've seen people get shot, stabbed, robbed. Um, I've seen people get um, assaulted by gangbangers coming through here. Um, but I've also seen a lot of good things, a lot of good people, people that bring their families out here to give us clothing. I'm one of the original people out here, one of the first. So when we had nothing, people would come and give us blankets in the winter, food. Um, that's how the whole donation thing started with my, the original crew of seven. That's how donations started coming back. We started educating people, then we got tents, and then we had organizations spring up from that, and uh, that's what we have today. Some of the ladies that have condos here, they come by and talk to me, and everybody asks me, they said, um, why are you still here? And um, I'd say the reason I'm still here is because um, everyone thinks that I'm their um, mom or their grandma, and they need a shoulder. And apparently those that are the worse off need more of the family relationship. And that's what I try. I try to hold a line on a familyness more than anything else. People in the community helped out by organizing protests and giving a say to people in trouble. But the city doesn't seem to know what to do with the homeless. Their tent camps are all over the city. Somehow we all need to come up with an answer. What do you, what do you hope for in the next year? Well, I want um, permanent housing, but um, I think the way everybody's going about permanent housing is more like a lotto or a lottery. And I've heard a couple of people say that they're um, choosing in a different way now. So they're throwing everything out the window and going for a new deal. 
and we can't have new deals. The, the way people treat each other like family is a, not like a case, like you're case number three. Or I was case number six on a voucher, and I haven't seen a voucher yet. And I want to see the voucher, and I want to see uh, uh, everybody treat everybody human instead of like worse than their dog. That's about it. Since their city was shut down, the city of Chicago has helped Sandy find an apartment, though Rex and Tom's whereabouts are still unknown to us. I was out down the street on 64th and Honor Me. I'm gonna give you my true story of me. I got caught for selling drugs. I'm on two year probation now. That right there, when I went to the county, changed my whole life around. I told myself going to each bullpen out the bullpen. I'm never coming back here again the day of my life. I'm going to Agro Chicago and they're gonna help me change my life. And ever since then, it always been about me volunteering, and I've never been back to jail since, and I'm not going back there. Not a lot happens on the street of West Inglewood until you get to a small white house on South Honoree. Welcome to the Peace House, home of I Go Chicago. Well, here at the Peace House, we focus on uh yoga mindset, uh, urban farming, and you know, connecting communities. So how would you describe yoga? Man, getting a peace of mind. Do you feel yoga keep you relaxed? Yeah, and um, you wanna be relaxed. Like I say, um, you wanna be just present in the moment, not letting anything worry you, you know, leaving all the negativity behind you when you step onto your mat. And that's where uh, yoga been. You know, it's good for the kids, good for the community, you know, hopefully. We can establish it here. The neighborhood, bruh. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you, it still is a little bro. Like, the viewers were able to look around. It's pretty nice in here now, but a while ago, or well, maybe two or three winters ago, me, Carl, Carl, and Willie, they know it was just like a big hole, just like a big blank spot. Well, this place came a long way. They changed a lot of people's lives around. Some of us was heading down the road. They made us go to a whole different direction or whatever, from negative to positive. And we took it and ran with it. They had turkey giveaways, uh, Christmas giveaways, uh, summer camp, uh, just regular days, just feeding people. So history, it's a lot of history, but then a small amount of time. They caught my ass when they first Say they was building the house by giving away sub sandwiches on the corner. They caught my eyes. I'm who is that? They passing out food and chips. Let me go down here and see what they talking about. Oh yeah, this finna be the I Grow Chicago house and uh, we're gonna be doing yoga. Okay, count me in. It's not too much to say. Every kid here has known violence. Uh, growing up around here, I seen a lot of friends die like and my starting, well, I ain't gonna say starting five, the 15 people that I had on my team from when I was a 12, 13 year old on a basketball team. It's only two of us alive and one of us in jail. And I'm sitting here, so that's kind of messed up statistics. So that kind of made me want to, you know, get my own, my life together, you know, do what I had to do. And when I came to Agro and started messing with Shango, they put me to the right links to get my business off the ground. And uh, right now I'm working on building two apps and trying to get another company to get going. And I was really, you know, kept me on that path, gave me the stuff I needed to need to get going. So that's, that's what it is for me. Yoga instructor Shango Johnson also spends time mentoring his students. Do you think if taking random boys off the street, it will stop them from game banging? That's all I do. I only deal with game bangers. I don't deal with, I, when I get you, I could tell if you are, uh, uh, if you fronting and all that, I come from that. I've been gang banging, been in the street since I've been 14 years old. I'm 43 years old. So if I only worked a job four years, that means I was 39 years old still making crazy decisions. When we doing right, for some reason, I ain't being funny, Mary J. Blige even made a song 
good boys are, good people are, boring, bad people are. Hey, I don't know how the song goes. You know the song. You were singing it with me. I see you guys doing yoga. Yoga. And I just want to ask y'all what it's about. What are you doing it for? Uh, what we do is we combat against trauma using yoga, urban farming, mindfulness training, mentoring, art, different other ways of engaging self-efficacy into these young men and everything. This is the one summer program where I think it's a great program. It's awesome. This is the second, third year we didn't have it, where they sent us a group of men or a group of young ladies. And um, we work with them using anything. At iGrow, we change it up, though. We don't believe in just working. We believe in working the mind, the body, and the soul. So with the yoga, we do a special yoga called Kundalini, where it's spelled K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I. It's a science of the body. It's a technology dealing with the mind, body, and soul. So we believe you cannot do anything without breathing. So the Kuni Yoga really expressed on, on, on teaching us how to breathe and everything. So these guys have been doing yoga for like two, three weeks. And already on their own, they could let you know how much of a benefit it has been and how much of a subtraction it has been from them. How do y'all feel about joining this? At first, I thought it was just a, a normally summer, summer job where, you know, we just do work and we get paid. But when I actually got here, Sango and Mo and the rest of the guys, they actually, you know, taught us, like, came at us like big brothers or a family. Or like a family. Big, yeah, they never came at us like a boss or nothing like that. And you know, that was really unexpected. Like, do you feel that helping hand you can lean on? Yeah. It's basically like, you know, mentors, they, they help you, tutors, they help you get, make you get your goals done. And nowadays, some kids that's growing up in our community, pops ain't home, mama strung out somewhere. So <laughs> we try to find them type of kids and bring them type of kids to this house. I was locked up and I got out of jail. You know, Rob helped me, she brought me in. She said, I want you to stay up out of there. You, you was a really good person. And I, I see you, I see it in you, you got potential. And you can be what you want to be. She said, as long as you st stay with me and stay step by step, you won't have to go back. And ever since then, I ain't been back. So it helped me out a lot, you know. They are starting to change. With the Kundalini Yoga, you watch different things. And it's up to the teacher. And so they are, are uh, making better conscious decisions. Like one of the young men had an incident yesterday. He reached out to me and another mentor. He handled it in a way I think was very, not only professional, but it showed a lot of maturity of him. Um, some mom was coming late the first day and everything. And so um, they, have, they changing with that. You're able to say something to them if they're not doing right and they, you know, they take without saying nothing back. Me, I come from the big mama era. So a lot of them didn't come from the Big Mama era. So they think love is giving you everything you want. But I learned that love is taking me to this uh, thing and teach me how to fish. The kids come to the Peace House and find a way to help or be helped. I was in school, but I wasn't doing good. My grades was bad. I was getting all Fs and all that. But now I'm getting A's and B's. And My little G miss. And I got a project coming up on chocolate. And like I said, I girl gonna help me do it. They bought all my supplies. They helped me a lot, so. In the summertime before the house was even built, I was volunteer, helping all the kids and feeding them and stuff. And, you know, um, making sure they use the bathrooms and, you know, helping the kids, like, until the um, house get built and all that. When you guys are angry, do you use the techniques to keep you calm? He said no. <laughs> no. Why not? Uh, like y'all talking, talking about at home? Yeah, like if you angry, do you use these techniques? No. No. Why I mean, not? I say it's peaceful, so right. why not? I don't get mad a lot. You don't get mad a lot, but that's good. I can only speak for myself. I feel as if it's very relaxing, but I'm hardly angry, so I wouldn't know how how it would go about that. Well, I want to personally say this to you, because when my brother, I see you got a whole group of boys, <laughs> and my brother's the same age as them, and I used to wonder, like, why are people not giving him giving the young boys more opportunities to just get out of the street and, you know, just 
be in something that they won't be in the streets. And what you was just saying, you know, I give credit when it's due. And I appreciate, even though that I'm not in the group, I appreciate what you're doing because you basically getting all of them off the streets. You're giving them opportunity to just to let them know that this is not, the streets is just not all you got to like. Black people need to wake up. Black people need to wake up just because you got into it with him, with him at a club or something over, over some words, over the Instagram or Twitter or whatever, you go kill him? Throw away your life and kill him? I would love to see what these, y'all you know, ask for what is these brothers, you know, they life, what they do, what they want to do, what's they gift in them? And so now we got them on the camera, I believe that's a nice question. Like, okay. I really don't know what I want to do, but I know I want to graduate from high school, go to college. I just want you know, to get a good job, not a stressful job, a good job where I can make money but not work as really hard. I can really provide for my family and make sure that my kids, if whatever they want, they can get it without being in a problem or nothing like that. Next, what you want to be in life and what you want to be? An entrepreneur. I want, yeah, I want to design my own clothes. I want to be a computer engineer. A computer engineer? I want to be an FBI agent or investment banker. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm starting school on August 25th at SIUE, so I can study psychology and become a psychiatrist. Oh, okay. What type of business you got? Um, I, have, I also have a landscaping business. Oh, yeah. Me and my okay. cousin are partners. We, um... I would say right now we mostly cater to like the Evergreen neighborhood because that's where most of our clients are. Okay. Okay. I want to go back to school and work on cars. See, when people think of the Agro Chicago house located on CD4 for honorary, they think it's just for honorary. It's not for honorary. It's for our whole community. We don't care if you're on 89th, 95th, 103rd. If you hear about the Agro Chicago house, come on. Them doors is open for whoever. That girl go show you, they go show you love. You go come here, eat, run around, <laughs> whatever you want to do, you go do. But hey, you go have to get that homework done. Not to tell my secret at the end of the day, I always cry or I always feel good that um, they not, not, not I accomplished, that they accomplished. With everyone in their neighborhood learning new peaceful skills, at least this block is a better place to live. No, 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 no.